recording. Everyone's here. Awesome. I had to do a quick tech check. So let's go ahead and start on our mats. Everyone can just come down to uh, come down into a cross-legged position. You can just cross your ankles uh, just in front of your body. Let your knees fall out wide. Let the root of your body get nice and heavy and extend the crown of your head up towards the ceiling so that your spine is nice and extended and uh, primed for, for energy and for oxygen to flow through freely. Go ahead and gently roll the shoulders down the spine and tuck the chin ever so slightly down towards the chest, lifting the chest up as we go. This is actually known as Jalandara Bandha. It's a bind that we can do within the body to concentrate and focus energy in this portion of the body um, between the, the head and the shoulders, sort of. So what this does is, it physically, it protects the back of our neck, our cervical spine, but it also uh, is really good for things like meditation or pranayama, which is breath work, because it is sealing off energy in the higher chakras, which are energy centers in the body. And the higher chakras are actually the ones that are associated with enlightenment and deeper thoughts. So when we're focusing the energy here, we are actually able to magnify uh, the power of the practice. So that's why whenever I'm doing breath work or meditating, I take this bind to just amplify that effort. So go ahead and seal the lips. You can direct your gaze down towards the floor or close your eyes if you like. And start taking a deep inhale and exhale through the nostrils. And as you continue breathing, start trying to match the intensity and the duration and the quality of your inhales and your exhales. So you're generating a nice, um, even breath. We're gonna move into what's known as Nadi Shodhana or alternate nostril breathing. This is a great breathwork practice to bring yourself into balance. It literally balances the, uh, the masculine and feminine energies in the body, the creative and analytical sides of our uh, personalities. Um, so it's a, definitely a really good practice to also uh, just do on a regular basis, but definitely before a yoga class so that you're more centered as you move through. So we're gonna take a, a hand bind as well, known as a mudra. So you can start by opening your right hand out wide and then tuck in your pointer finger and your middle finger so that your thumb, ring finger, and pinky are left extended. We're gonna start by plugging the right nostril with our thumb, leaving the left nostril exposed. And breathing in through the nose, we're gonna take an inhale for the count of four, three, two, one. Go ahead and seal the left nostril with your ring finger and exhale out of the right nostril for four, three, two, one. Inhale again from the right, four, three, two, one. Exhale through the left, four, three, two, one. Let's do one more cycle together and then I'll leave you to do your own for a couple of breaths. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Exhale right, four, three, two, one. Inhale right, four, three, two, one, exhale left, four, three, two, and one. Take your own breath now for three cycles, back and forth, it counts as one, so let's do three more. And this is an especially good practice to notice the difference in the quality of the breath because it will differ between your left and your right nasal passages. So just be observant here. You don't need to force anything or try to make them match or even um, just observe. All right, at the bottom of your breath, go ahead and release your hand down to your lap. 
bring both palms to the knees with your palms facing up. We're gonna start moving through a little bit of a gentle spinal warm up as we work into our asana or our movement practice. Uh, we're gonna pair this with what's known as ujjayi breath or victorious breath. It's a deeper way of breathing through your nose uh, that generates heat in the body. It's very powerful for detoxifying and uh, also loosening up the body and bringing some heat into the joints uh, to improve flexibility and mobility. So very powerful posture, best done on an empty stomach. So hopefully um, you haven't eaten very recently, but it's okay. It's not bad to do it if you've eaten as well. So bringing the palms to the knees, palms face up. On the inhale, we're gonna draw the hands up and overhead, bringing the palms to touch at the same time, taking our inhale, completing the inhale at the top of the breath. And on the exhales, we're gonna flip the palms to come back down to the knees. It'd probably be good if I told you how to do the breath too. Yeah, so let me, let me do that. <laughs> so for Ujjayi breath, you're gonna start by sealing the lips and then shifting your tongue to the roof of your mouth and then moving it slightly back so that you're sealing off the back of your throat. We do this motion every day when we swallow, but we're gonna keep our tongue there in that locked position at the back of the throat. And as we take our inhales and exhales, you're gonna generate a much deeper sound that feels like it's starting almost from the belly and moving up and down the back of our throat. Sounds a bit like this. Sounds a bit like you're filling up a balloon or you're holding a conch shell up to your ear. So um, if you've gone ahead and, and done that alongside me, we'll go ahead and move into our practice now. So bring the palms to the knees and let's go ahead and take an inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more time, inhale. And exhale. We'll shift into a gentle twist. So take an inhale the same way we started. And on the exhale, you're gonna bring the left hand to the front, right hand goes behind you as you twist over your right shoulder. A few things to note here, make sure that you're pressing both knees down so that your left knee isn't picking up. Reach the crown of the head nice and tall and pull the navel back to the spine so that you're actually twisting from your core and from, from the waist and rather than just tossing your shoulders back behind you. Inhale, come back to center, palms touch overhead. Exhale, right hand comes to the front, left hand goes behind you as you twist over the left shoulder this time. Again, keep that belly, 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 <laughs> belly button pulled into the spine so you're protecting your lower back as you twist. It's a gentle twist, but we still always wanna protect our back whenever we can. Inhale to center, exhale right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. And now listen for the change. We're gonna drop the right hand down to the mat and reach up and over to the right with our left fingertips, really extending the left side body. At the same time, I want you to pay attention to the right side of your body and make sure you're not collapsing down, but rather lifting the ribs up and away from the hips and then turning over to the right. So both sides of the body are still engaged and extended. Inhale, right hand comes back to center. Exhale, drop the left palm down to the mat. Right hand reaches up overhead, still lifting the left rib cage up and away from the hips to keep the side of the body activated. Inhale, center. Exhale, lean right. Inhale, center, exhale, left. Inhale, center, exhale, right. Inhale, center, exhale, left. Go ahead and come back to center. And let's go ahead and come to the hands and the knees. Bring the palms directly underneath the shoulders and the knees directly underneath the hips. Release down to the tops of your feet. Few more things I'm gonna point out here with your hands. Press down into the wrist joint and lift up your fingertips for just a moment and reach the finger pads forward so that you're almost extending your fingers and getting as much surface area on the ground as possible. From here, press down into the pads or the tips of your fingers 
and draw them back towards the roots of your fingers where the knuckles are. When you do this, you're actually activating what's known as hasta bandha or the hand bind. And this is a really powerful grip that we can have in the body, which protects our wrist joint from bearing all the weight of the body. Anytime we're doing any weight bearing posture, this is a weight bearing posture. Um, crow pose is a weight bearing posture. Handstands are a weight bearing posture. So anytime that we can, we want to activate this bind so that the muscles in our hands and the mechanics of our hands are taking more of the, the work than the joint, than the wrist joint. And because a lot of the time, if you're in a yoga class and your wrist starts to hurt, it's probably because you're putting more pressure on your wrist joint and your fingers are then going out of alignment and working in weird ways, rather than if you just intentionally put that weight into your fingers, then they kind of start to grip the floor. Uh, and I always tell my students, this is almost like teaching your hands how to act like feet because our feet, they grip the earth as we walk and as we move through our, um, our days, but we don't realize because it's so second nature to us, but our hands, we need to teach them how to grip the earth in the same way and actually activate. And when we do this, you'll notice that your forearms start to engage a little bit. Um, and if you're really gripping the mat, your elbows almost turn in towards the body rather than coming out. Uh, next thing I'll notice is, or I'll mention is also to push firmly into the tops of your feet so that your thighs are activating here. And you're not just putting all the pressure on your knees. It can be painful to be on your knees for a while. So um, really push into the tops of your feet here and activate your thighs. So we'll move through a couple of cat cows uh, just to get the spine warmed up. So on the inhale, turn the tailbone up to the ceiling, drop the belly and lift the gaze up. For cow pose, exhale, tuck the chin into the chest, push the mat away, rounding out the shoulders, pull the belly button into the spine and round the tailbone down, hollowing out the belly for cat pose. Inhale, cow, reverse that movement. Really articulate each of the micro movements that we covered, but try to find a little bit of seamlessness, uh, a little seamless transition between each of them. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, cow. Use the breath here to guide the movement. Almost follow the body or follow the movements in the body behind the breath. Exhale, cat. One more time, inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. And then go ahead with that exhale and sink the hips back coming into child's pose, Balasana. Stretch the fingertips forward for just a moment to get some extension through the upper arms. Drop down to your forehead. We'll just be here for a quick moment. Re-engage your ujjayi breath if you lost it along the way, it's all right. It does tend to happen when we stop putting our focus on it. So let's just bring the ujjayi breath back into action here. Go ahead and gaze forward. On the inhale, we're going to grip the mat firmly underneath our palms and start to draw our chest forward coming into Bhujangasana Cobra Pose. So go ahead and press the forearms firmly down into the mat. And on the inhale, start to draw the chest forward, keeping it barely just off the mat, forearms still glued. When your chest is about in line with your elbows, then you can go ahead and start to peel the elbows off the mat as you dive all the way forward, coming to Bhujangasana Cobra. When we've arrived here, the full, our full body is now on the mat. We're still pushing into the tops of our feet. Pull the elbows into the sides of the body so you're still engaged and lift your gaze up slightly. Exhale, push yourself back to Balasana Child's Pose. Inhale, let's come forward, Bhujangasana. Exhale, push back, child's pose. Inhale, forward. Exhale, push back. Inhale, forward. Exhale, back. Inhale, forward. Exhale, back. Last time here, inhale, forward. Exhale, this time push all the way up to downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Lift the hips up towards the ceiling, straighten the legs bringing yourself into this inverted triangle position. So this is also an arm balance and a weight bearing posture, like I mentioned before. So re-engage your hastabandha, grip the mat firmly under the palms, rotate your elbows in so that they're facing the bottom of the mat or they're facing the mat rather than pointing out to the sides. Push the mat away firmly with your hands so that you're engaging your shoulder blades here. Push down through the heels to extend your hamstrings or the back of the legs. And almost more importantly, let's go through the bandhas again really quickly. So we've activated our hasta bandha, the hand bind. Tuck the chin into the chest. 
What we're doing here is we're releasing the back of the neck, the cervical spine. And when we pull the belly button into the spine here, we're actually protecting the lower back. This is known as Uddiyana Bandha or the abdominal uh, lock. Inhale, gaze forward between the palms. Exhale, take two wide steps up to the top of the mat, bend the knees generously, and go ahead and let your, the crown of your head reach down towards the, the mat and just sway side to side here. You can take any bind that feels comfortable. You can grab opposite elbows and sway side to side. You can grab opposite knees like I'm doing and just sort of rock yourself back and forth. You can let the hands drape down to the mat but just let the belly get soft here and drape over the thighs. You can wrap your arms around your shins and draw the chest in towards the knees, folding into yourself. And then go ahead and release the hands. Engage your Uddiyana Bandha here, your abdominal bind, and slowly roll yourself up to a standing position. Mountain pose, Tadasana. So the last bind I'm gonna talk about right now is called Padabandha or the foot bind. So there's a difference between standing passively and standing actively. Just like we did with the hands, you're gonna lean back on your heels, thinking of them like your wrist joint and lift your toes up off the mat. From here, stretch the toes forward and then gently drop them back down, one toe at a time, starting with your outermost toes, moving inward. When the full surface area of your foot's on the mat, now go ahead and grip the mat underneath your toe pads, drawing the toes back towards the heels. When you do this, you'll notice a slight lifting through the upper to the kneecaps. That's going to engage your upper thighs. So when we're standing, this bandha, this bind gives us a lot more grip. It makes us a little bit more stable and more connected to the earth underneath us. So as we're doing any kind of balancing posture or one-legged posture, we have just as much grip and uh, stability in the earth as we would with all of our limbs down in the mat. From here, slightly Tuck the uh, tailbone forward, pull the ribs back towards your spine rather than flaring the, the body outward. Roll the shoulders down the spine and let's inhale and lift the palms up overhead, gentle bend in the back for Hasta Uttanasana, hands up overhead. We're gonna shift into a gentle Surya Namaskar practice, which is a traditional sun salutation sequence. As you exhale, bow forward, hinging at the hips, drop the hands down towards the shins or the feet for Hastapadasana, hands to the feet. Again, just because the name of the posture says hands to feet doesn't mean you have to touch your feet. You can also grab your shins or your knees, whatever is accessible to you. On the inhale, we're gonna press our, pant, our palm down into the mat and step the right foot back, coming to Ashwasanchalasana, equestrian posture. So here we have our hands just on the ends of the mat. You're bending the left knee and your right leg is extended behind you. On the front side of the mat, you're extending the chest forward with your gaze. Open through the chest here. Step the left foot back, coming to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Key thing to remember here is you're actually holding your breath in this posture. You're not breathing in or breathing out. As you exhale, you're going to come to Ashtanga Namaskar, eight point salute. First thing you're going to do is drop the knees down to the mat. Lower the chest as well so that your chest and your palms are down on the mat and then lower down to your chin. So you have eight points of contact with your mat. Your hips are still lifted and activated. It's important here that you continue to engage the core so that you're not um, flaring the lower back. On the inhale, it's gonna be a compound movement. So you're gonna push yourself forward with your toes and you're gonna draw the self, your body forward with your hands, gripping the mat so that your chest comes through to Bhujangasana Cobra Pose. Release down to the tops of the feet. We've been here before, so just engage those shoulders, pull the elbows into the sides of the body and gaze ahead. Exhale, push back. Again, coming to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, step the right foot forward, Ashwasanchalasana. So we're returning the way that we came. We've done a half cycle with the 12 postures that we're doing right now. And we're gonna come back the same way in the second half. Exhale, step the left foot forward, Hasta Padasana, hands to the feet. Inhale, rise up, hands overhead, Hasta Uttanasana. Exhale, palms to the chest, Pranamasana, prayer pose. Inhale, again, Hasta Uttanasana, hands up overhead, slightly push the hips forward. Exhale, bow forward, Hasta Padasana, hands to the feet. 
Inhale, this time we're gonna start the other way. We're gonna shift the left foot back for Ashwa Santalasana equestrian posture. Again, draw the chest forward so you're extending the spine, push it back through your left heel to keep your left leg engaged. Step the right foot back for Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, hold the breath here. Exhale, Ashtanga Namaskar, drop the knees, the chest and the chin and the feet. Inhale, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose, draw the chest forward, release to the tops of the feet. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, shift the hips up. Inhale, left foot forward. Ashwasanchalasana, equestrian posture. So we're now completing our cycle. We're back to where we started. Exhale, step the right foot forward. Inhale, Hastavutanasana, hands up overhead. And exhale, palms to the heart, Pranamasana. That was one complete cycle. We're going to go through that two more times. Inhale, Hastavutanasana, hands up overhead. Exhale, Hastapadasana, hands to the feet. Inhale, Ashwasanchalasana, right foot back. Hold the breath, downward facing dog. Exhale, Ashtanga Namaskar. Eight point salute, drop down to the knees, chest and chin. Inhale, Bhujangasana, Cobra. Exhale, Adho Mukhasanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward, Ashwasanchalasana. Exhale. Hastapadasana, hands to the feet. Inhale, Hastotanasana, hands up overhead. Exhale, Pranamasana. Inhale. Exhale, Hastapadasana, hands to the feet. Inhale, left foot back, Ashwasanchalasana. Hold the breath, downward facing dog, step the right foot back. Exhale, Ashtanga Namaskar, eight point salute. Inhale, Bhujangasana, Cobra. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, left foot forward, Ashwasanchalasana. Keep pushing back through that right heel. Exhale, Hastapadasana, hands to the feet. Inhale, hands up overhead, Hastotanasana. Exhale, Pranamasana, hands to the heart. For this last cycle, I'm going to just cue the postures um, so that you have a little bit more space and silence to enjoy the practice. Inhale, Hastotanasana. Exhale, Hastapadasana, hands to the feet. Inhale, right foot back. Hold the breath, downward dog. Exhale. Inhale, Cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward. Exhale, hands to the feet. Inhale, hands up overhead. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, left foot back. Hold the breath. Downward dog. Exhale. Inhale, Cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, left foot forward. Exhale, hands to the feet. Inhale, hands up overhead. Exhale, hands to the heart. All right, listen for the change here. Inhale, squat the hips down, lift the palms up overhead for Utkatasana chair pose. A few things to notice here. So grip the mat again under your feet for Pada, Pada Bandha. But this time I also want you to imagine that you're splitting the mat in half with your feet so that you're engaging all the way through the back of the thighs. Round the tailbone down a little bit so you're not flaring the lower back. Lift up through your fingertips so you're lifting up the spine. And then from here, sink down a little bit lower. Exhale, draw the hands down to the mat for Uttanasana forward fold. Similar to Hastapadasana, what we've been doing, but you just have a little bit more leeway here to grab your shins, your knees, whatever is comfortable. Inhale, halfway lift, Adho Uttanasana. So plant the hands on the shins or the mat 
Extend the crown of the head forward, lengthening your spine. It's important here that you continue to pull the belly button into your spine so that your lower back is supported. Draw the shoulder blades in towards each other so that your chest is still open. Exhale, plant the hands down on the mat. Step both feet back. Bend the elbows, lowering your chest down halfway to Chaturanga Dandasana. You can also drop down to your knees here. That's fine. Inhale. You can come forward to Bhujangasana, Cobra, or extend your arms all the way for Upward Facing Dog. Uddhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, push back, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, lift the right leg high. Push up through your heel here. So level off both hips so that your right hip isn't peeking up. You're not tilting yourself open. Keep both hips facing the mat and push up through the heel. Exhale, bring the right foot forward. Anjaneyasana, low lunge. On the inhale, you're gonna spin the left heel. So your extended leg behind you, you're gonna spin that left heel down to the mat. And then lift your torso up, bring your palms up overhead for warrior one, Vita Bhadrasana. Take a moment here, settle in. Bring back the Ujjayi breath if you lost it. On the inhale, draw the fingertips up to the ceiling, lengthening the spine. And as you exhale, sink down deeper into your right knee, drawing the knee in towards your big toe. Press down into the outer edge of your left foot so that you're really engaging that back leg. Once more, inhale, lift up, get a little bit more length in the spine, pull those ribs back. And as you exhale, Bring the left hip forward and pull back into the crease of your right hip. One more inhale here. Exhale, keep your legs the same as you open your hands out to the front and back of the mat for warrior two. Reach through both sets of fingertips as you gaze over your right hand. Keep sinking over that right knee and float the shoulders down away from the ears. Sometimes people think that if you keep moving in a yoga class, you're generating that heat. You're doing what's called a tapas or generating that heat, as I just said. Um, but sometimes you can do that same thing by holding a posture with intention and with intensity. And when you're holding a posture correctly in the right alignment, it can be very difficult. <laughs> so just another way to look for that tapas through stillness. So on the inhale, let's flip the right palm, reach forward through the fingertips. And then tick tock the hands back, bringing the left hand down to the thigh, lifting up through the right fingertips, just like we did at the beginning of class. I'm going to ask you here to lift up through your right fingertips. So you are extending the right side of the body, but at the same time, you're drawing the left rib cage up and away from the hips so that you're not collapsing on yourself. Keep bending through that right knee, pressing down through the edge of your left foot. One more inhale here, reach up high. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down to the front of the mat, framing the right foot, pick up your back toes, sorry, your back heel. Inhale, step the right foot back, coming to plank. Exhale, lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. All right, let's do that on the left. Now inhale, float the left leg high. Again, kicking up through the heel, leveling both hips down to the mat. Exhale, swing that left foot forward, coming to Anjaneyasana, low lunge. Inhale, spin that right heel down to the mat this time. And lift your palms up overhead, coming to warrior one. Reach up through those fingertips, extending the spine but keep the space and the distance between your shoulders and your ears so you're not scrunching up your neck. Exhale, sink deeply over the left knee, drawing the knee in towards the big toe. Inhale, reach up, bring the ribs back in towards the spine, slightly curl the tailbone forward. 
and exhale, draw the right hip forward as you pull back into the left hip crease, leveling off your hips to the front of the mat. One more inhale. Exhale, keep your legs the same and open your hands out to the front and back of the mat for warrior two. Inhale, flip the left palm, reach forward through your fingertips. Exhale, drop the left, the right hand down to the thigh, lift the left hand up overhead for reverse warrior. Viparita Vida Badrasana. Engage both sides of the body here, drawing the right ribs up and away from the hips. Opening up through the left rib cage. And exhale, cartwheel the hands down to the front of the mat, pick up your back heel for low lunge. Inhale, step that left leg back, plank pose. Exhale, let's go through our vinyasa, drop down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a moment here, let yourself breathe. We're gonna go through one final push before we start cooling down the body with just a little bit of, you know, some cheeky push-ups. Uh, if you follow me, you'll know that I've just released this video that details a few different ways that you can incorporate push-ups into your yoga asana practice. So we're gonna go through a couple of them. We've already been through one, which was the cobra push-up we did at the beginning of class. So let's go ahead and inhale, lift that right leg high. Exhale, draw the right leg forward. Plant your right foot outside of your right palm. So both palms are inside the foot. Go ahead and bend both elbows coming down to your lizard posture with Sankristasana. So you'll drop down to both forearms. It's okay if your right knee opens up a bit. Push yourself up, extending the right hand up to the ceiling, revolving the torso over to the right hand side. And then bring your palm back down to the mat for lizard. Push back to downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg high. Exhale, drop the right foot forward. Sorry, the left foot forward, bringing both palms inside the left leg. Drop down to your forearms for Uttan Prasasana, lizard. Left knee might open up, that's fine. Push up, extending the left hand up to the ceiling, revolving the body over to the left. Exhale, drop back down, Uttan Prasasana, lizard. Push back down when facing dog. Again, lift that right leg high. As you exhale, bend the knee and draw the shin parallel towards the front of the mat like you're setting up for pigeon pose. It's okay if the shin's not parallel. In fact, it might be at a 45 degree angle like mine. That's completely fine. Stay active on your back foot so that your toes are pressing into the mat. Lift the chest up nice and high. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, inhale. Keep those elbows pulling into the sides of the body as you bend them back, lowering the chest down to the mat, not all the way, but about halfway. Exhale, push yourself back up. Come back to downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale, draw the right leg forward. Again, stay back on your toes with the right leg. Left shin towards the top of the mat. Inhale, lower the chest down, keeping those elbows pulled in. Exhale, push yourself back up. Come to downward facing dog. Inhale, float that right leg high. Exhale, come to low lunge anjaneyasana. Walk the hands over to the left long side of the mat, paralleling your feet as you go. Inhale, press your hands into the mat underneath the shoulders. Lift the crown of your head up. Extending, pull your hips and your crown of the head in opposite directions here to get as much length in the spine as you can. And exhale, drop the crown of the head down to the mat, releasing for Prasadi Tapadopanasana, wide legged forward fold. It's important here that we're not simply dropping the crown of the head forward, that we're actually 
still fully engaging the body. So grip the mat underneath your toes here. Press into the insides of the feet. It's almost like you're drawing the feet together, energetically, not physically, so that you're engaging all the way through your inner thighs here to help stabilize yourself as you fold forward. Really release the weight of your head down towards the mat so that your spine is being tractioned down by this weight. Getting a little bit more length. If you like, you can walk your hands through the legs, pulling you back just a little bit more, only if you feel stable enough to let go. Inhale, reach forward, lifting through the crown of the head. Listen for the change here. As we exhale, we're gonna shift our hips over to the right and then drop the hips down for a low squat, Skandasana. So you can do this posture in two ways. You can stay down here with your hips uh, reaching down to the mat like so. If you're here, extend the left leg and flex your left toes back towards the body. Keep the, the spine nice and straight. You can have your hands down for balance or bring them to the heart. If you're gonna balance, energetically squeeze your thighs in together so that you have a nice and stable foundation. If you'd like an alternative, you can lift the hips a little bit higher up. If you're gonna be here, flatten your left foot down to the mat, keep shifting that right hip forward. And again, you wanna keep your spine extended here, whether your hands are on your resting on your thighs or if you have your hands to the heart, keep that spine lifted. Let's hold here for another two breaths. Finish that exhale and on the inhale, pass through center. Exhale, let's shift the hips over to the left. You can choose to take the same variation you did on the other side or you could try the other one. Up to you, same deal if your hips are down towards the mat, you're gonna extend the right leg with your foot flexed. If your hips are higher up, then make sure you have your foot flush with the mat. In both cases, keep that spine lifted, keep that chest lifted. Gaze about three to four feet in front of you and breathe. Inhale, come through center. Exhale, come back to the top of the mat for low lunge and Janayasana. Inhale, step the right foot back. Exhale, hold here. Downward facing dog. Inhale, float the left leg high. Exhale, bring the left foot forward, Anjaneyasana. Go ahead and walk your hands over to the right long side of the mat. Once again for Pasadi Tapadotanasana. Inhale, push the mat away, extending the spine. Exhale, see if you can reach the crown of the head just a little bit more forward as you're dropping down to the mat here. You might feel some sensation in the back of the legs. And just notice where your threshold is. See if there's any difference the second time around. Maybe this time you can flip the palm so that your fingertips face the back of the mat or behind you. Maybe you can even walk your hands through the legs a little bit further, pulling yourself through the legs, folding in. Hold here for two more breaths. One. Two, bring the hands back under the shoulders. Inhale, lift up and exhale. Let's sink the hips over to the left-hand side this time. Again, notice which variation feels good for you now. It might be different than last time. Yoga is all about responding in the moment and doing what feels good and what feels right. So explore, definitely figure out where your edges are. I, I really encourage that with yoga asana, especially figure out where your edges are and where those boundaries are. Um, and you'll start to learn where the threshold is for where you can push and where you shouldn't be pushing. It's really knowledge that we hold about ourselves. We're experts in our own bodies. Inhale, come through center. Exhale, sink to the right. Inhale, come back to the top of the mat. 
Exhale, push back to downward facing dog. From here, go ahead and drop both knees down to the mat as wide as the mat and sink the hips back for a wide-legged child's pose. We're gonna take a moment here, just let, let our hearts have some time to slow down. Slow down the breath. Two more breaths here. One. Two. All right, go ahead and lift the chest up. Come back to sit on your heels. Cross your legs underneath you and extend the legs out long in front of you. You're gonna open up your legs about uh, just a bit wider than the mat. So you're forming a little bit of a V shape with your legs, flex both feet. Go ahead and bend your right foot into the body, bringing your heel in towards your, the root of your body. Sit up nice and tall. Inhale, extend the hands up overhead. Turn your torso so it's facing over your left leg. And as you exhale, reach forward with your fingertips, extending the spine first. Try not to start folding or bending just yet. You're just reaching forward and getting that length, keeping the foot flexed. And now go ahead and exhale, drape the chest over the leg. Wherever it lands is fine. You can grab whatever is closest to you and accessible. So that might be your thigh, it might be your shin. If you want to try touching your feet, you can go ahead and bind your hands to the feet and just relax the muscles in the body and let your grip and your bind sustain you here. Go ahead and walk the hands back. Swap your legs, bring the left heel into the body, extend the right leg long, flexing at the foot, turn the torso over the right leg, inhale, lift your hands up overhead. Exhale, reach forward through the fingertips and fold down. Go ahead and walk yourself back up. Bend both knees. Reach your hands forward and slowly lower down to your back. At the same time, pick your feet back up into the air, keeping those knees bent. You have a few options here. You can do out in the balasana with your hands wrapped around the back of your thighs, pulling your knees down towards the body. You can also reach up, grab the outsides of your feet. Once again, pulling your knees down in towards the chest, or you can even extend the legs here. So choose a variation that feels good for you. Let's hold here for five breaths. One. Two. Three. Four. And five, go ahead and release the legs. Extending them long, drop your palms down to the mat, facing up. You can go ahead and close your eyes here if you like for Shavasana Corpse Pose. As you inhale, I want you to envision a small ball of white light. Travel with this ball, notice where it goes in the body, where it dims and where it brightens. And also on this inhale, I want you to notice, just notice where in the body you might still be gripping or holding on to any tension or control. And as you exhale, I want you to push that white ball of light back through the body, noticing where it goes and use this exhale to release any tension or any grips that you have in the body, letting your body fully relax. Slow down the breathing. Let your muscles release. This is my favorite posture at the end of class to kind of blur that line between where I end and where the rest of the world starts. I often find that after physical practice, the edges of my body feel 
less rigid and a little bit more vibrational, a little bit more energetic. And I really enjoy, especially in this posture, sort of meditating in that in between. In fact, this posture is all about noticing that in between, between the body, the mass that we have and the spirit, the energy that gives us life. Thinking about which one was the original blueprint, in fact. It's an excellent way to practice another limb of yoga known as pratyahara or withdrawal of the senses. When we start being so aware of all the sensory input and just dissolve back into the matter, into the energy that we have. When you're ready, go ahead and roll over onto the side and gently push yourself back up to a seat. And with this, we conclude today's class. Thank you all so much for joining this fundraiser and for showing up for class today. Through the technical difficulties, again, I have no idea why the live wasn't working on YouTube, but thank you for being flexible and shifting over to Zoom. Um, I really appreciate having all of you here and the energy that you brought today. Um, thank you so much for contributing to the fundraiser, for being here uh, and continuing to show up when these opportunities come up for, come up for us to give back uh, to the world and give back to people who um, are in circumstances that you know no one should be in. So I hope that you all have a lovely rest of your weekend. I hope that you feel nice and limber and energized. Uh, and I will see you around the internet. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. I'm going to pop up and stop the recording. <laughs>